are you doing? I'm great. Nice great. to see you. Please. Thank you. It's been a tradition that you're coming uh, It has been. Every it's great year. to be back. I love the setup this year. It's really cool. You like the setup? I, I'm, I'm still uh, getting used to it. It's, uh, I, I find it very interesting. It's different from being like on a race stage. This feels like more like in a, we're like in a gladiator pit. Yes. A uh, gladiator pit. Yeah. yeah, you can throw things at us yeah. if you're not. Uh, I think you have to. If, yeah, well, the guy already complained about the towels. So, any, how, we treat you well? The hotel is okay? The hotel's good. <laughs> I, I found the right towels. Uh, <laughs> the shower's a little small, but. Uh, <laughs> okay. That's no, all right. That will right. be more difficult to fix. Right. Hey, I got a present for you. So, this is, Thank um, you. This is our uh, limited edition uh, partnership with Post It, um, where uh, you know, we made. Uh, a big deal was posted a few months ago, where Evernote is the mainstream strategy for making post-it notes digital. So we're going to have billions of post-it notes that say Evernote on them, and we taught our software how to recognize post-it notes. Uh, and but a, a what, what's a digital post-it note? It's just an Evernote note? It's just a normal post-it note that you, you take a picture of with Evernote, and then we do magical things with it uh, by doing that. But we made these post-it holders to kind of celebrate it uh, that we put up on the market, and uh, we've been having absolutely impossible time actually keeping them in stock. So I was able to save oh, one for you. It's probably the last you. one in existence. But really, but thank you, thank you, Phil. So what's be... special about them? Well, that's the whole thing. The notes are just post-it notes. Uh, there, it works with any post-it notes, but Evernote now recognizes the four different colors, and you can assign meanings to different colors. So if you take a picture, oh, wow. we automatically strip out the color put it back in digitally to make it look really perfect. And you can say, you know, green post-it notes mean they're to-dos and pink ones means, you know, send to my assistant or something like that. So you can make uh, specific meanings for different colors of post-it notes, kind of giving, uh, giving this physical object a, a digital life. Uh, that's one of our main themes over and the next few years. it automatically, scans it. And yeah. Awesome. Thank you. My I'm going pleasure. to use it right now. <laughs> uh, Phil, you, that, you, uh, there is a uh, tradition here that you always come with information that you have not been sharing anywhere. And people tell me about it. It's like, it's amazing. I, I, now a Chinese are speaker saying you should do like Phil is doing. Is and they don't. You know, Phil has been sharing his revenue numbers and sign up numbers since the very beginning of Evernote, when uh, Evernote was not a uh, billion dollar company yet. Yeah, back, back when we had very little to, can to I say that, very numbers to share. I think you can say that, yeah. But it was kind of an accident first time, so it's tradition now, but I think the first time I remember, actually, uh, I had the board confidential slides up there. Yeah. And I think you pointed out, like, why does it say uh, proprietary and confidential on it? And yeah, so it started off as a mistake, uh, like all good traditions, but I think, yeah, I think we're on to something. Can we have uh, Evernote slides? Yeah, we have them. Sure. Um, so we did this kind of crazy thing a few months ago. We launched Evernote Market. Uh, we launched uh, physical products, and I think most of the reaction was uh, why. Uh, yeah, was why. Uh, you know, we actually started last year on, on stage, so I gave you the very first pair of Evernote socks. Yes, Evernote business socks. I love them. Uh, and uh, it, it's pretty not. It's quite not obvious to have a start a tech startup do socks. I it guess. is it's kind of unless you want to get in the business of selling socks. Yes, the sock market is uh, is important. Uh, it us. is absolutely. Um, we really and think towels. of it as that now there's a need. You know, Guy was saying there's not always a, a need for startups, but like it sounds like bigger towels in, 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 yeah. in France. Sorry. Uh, absolutely. Um, we think about what we want the Evernote as a company to be, like what's next for us. You know, we, we talk about building a hundred year um, startup, and it's very hard to know what the products are going to be like in 95 years. We're about 5% in, we're five years in. 95 years. Yeah, so you got 95 years to go. Yeah, you talk about 10 years and people laugh at me. You're talking about 100 years. Uh, 100 years is a little bit easier to predict than 10 years. You will be dead. It's very likely. Is that okay? Um, well, 95 years plus whatever age you have. I hope that's a lot of years. I hope to. I hope at that point to still to be like a like a head mounted on like a robot spider body with like laser beams or something. Oh, you'll be downloaded somewhere. Yeah, I hope so. There's we'll have a little feel and a little loic, and we'll keep doing Q and A's. Sure, that, that that makes sense. That sounds awesome. So tell me about the hundred years. Um, and so the idea is, it's impossible to know what the products look like in 95 years because it's impossible to know what even people will look like in 95 yep. years. So we have to think about the brand. And so the Evernote brand is very specific. Like we want Evernote to be the, the most visible brand, the most important brand for knowledge workers. For like when you see Evernote on something, you should think if you're a knowledge worker, oh, that's a, that's a more productive way to do something. 
It, 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 uh, it helps you deal with all of the details that are coming at you every day in your life. Um, so the core lines that we won't cross, like our core principles are our customers are knowledge workers. Our products make those knowledge workers more productive, make them happier, give them a more elegant way to, to do something. And we want to build this trust for 100 years, so all of our revenue is direct. We reject any indirect revenue, so there's no, there's no advertising. No there's retailer, no, no... Well, no, no big data, no... Uh, no we, don't, we don't try to be clever with your information. Everything that you put into Evernote is private, and we don't try to make money for it. So those are kind of the three core principles, that it's knowledge workers, it's about making them happier and more productive, and it's all direct, kind of honest revenue. But then there's other lines that we'll cross all the time. So uh, international lines, uh, you know, that used to be important. It used to matter what kind of company you were, but now that's kind of irrelevant. Uh, only about 25% of our users are in the US, so everything is global all the time. We cross that line. Hardware and software. Uh, I don't believe that that distinction makes a lot of sense anymore. I think over the next five years, we're gonna see this complete blending together of physical project products and digital products. Um, that distinction between hardware and software, between physical and digital, it's sort of an artificial one. It only came about you know, 10, 20 years ago, and I think, it's, I think it's actually on its way to disappearing. So the best products are ones that have both physical and digital components, uh, and um, personal and, and work. Uh, all of our products are meant to be used kind of in your personal life, but also yeah, you know, at work. This is completely mixed. There is no more. So we mix in you know, international, physical, digital, personal work. Like That's all mixed in. And the idea is to just make products that, that serve the core constituencies, but that totally disrespect these traditional boundaries of hardware, software, national boundaries, and work and life boundaries. Uh, and uh, so we, we, we did it. We launched um, a year ago. We only had one revenue stream, which was Evernote Freemium, you know, the, the traditional one that we launched with, or that I have been talking about the stats, about the more you use it, the more you convert. Mm -hmm. And then a year ago, on, on this stage, we actually announced uh, Evernote Business. Yep. Those are our second stream for companies. And then a few months ago, we announced the Evernote Market, the physical products, and uh, thought I would talk about how they're doing. So please. Uh, so the idea is it's, it's all only direct revenue. So these are, there are three revenue streams, but they're all, they're all the same product. And you have from no revenue stream a few years ago. That you yeah, we went from nothing to, to having three. And the idea is um, these are meant to be mutually self-reinforcing. So what, what we'll see is, each one of these makes the other revenue streams also bigger. So a lot of companies worry about cannibalization of, of kind of their own stuff. This is meant to be kind of a very happy cannibalization where it actually reinforces uh, yep. uh, each other. Um, and so the, the question is how long on these three streams, how long did it take us to get to the first million dollars in sales? You know, there's, there's, the, there's always, they say the, uh, you know, the first million is the hardest. Like when you make a company, kind of your first million dollars is, is tough. It's the hardest one to get. So how long did it take to get to the first million dollars in sales on the three streams? Well, the first one we had was the traditional one, the freemium model. And um, the freemium model took, uh, it actually took 16 months to get, uh, uh, to get the first million dollars. Uh, then we launched Evernote Business, and Evernote Business actually only took, only took five months uh, to get there because it leveraged all of the work we'd already done with premium. Because most of the people who were buying business How old accounts, is Evernote? Well, so we're, we're in our sixth year as a service. We launched the service in 2008. So we had our five-year anniversary a few months ago. Uh, we had a whole big uh, mission, 5% accomplished uh, banner since we've 5% in and 95% <laughs> left to go. 5% of 100 years, yeah. Um, and, and then we launched Evernote Market, and so we went from 16 months for the first million for premium, five months for the first million in business, and the market did it in, in, in one month. So every, every new initiative builds on this base of, of customers and of users that we have, and so it becomes easier and easier to introduce new things which, which earn more money. Uh, so basically, you know, two months ago, before, right before we launched the market, my biggest worry, on the, on the day before we launched it, my biggest fear was that uh, uh, no one's gonna buy anything, because <laughs> I which, thought... I which thought, is a legitimate fear, because you're not expecting a software company to sell scanners. Yeah, and we thought, like, who, who would want physical products from Evernote? No one's going to buy anything. I, I was really worried, and I kind of thought, um, you know, I'm going to have a very difficult conversation with the board and with investors about why I took this company into this, you know, very long, you know, process of making these products. Because we worked on this for, for, for more than a year. This wasn't a casual thing. Uh, and so my biggest concern was no one was going to buy it. And then literally three days later, my biggest concern was we can't keep it, we can't keep it in stock. You know, I have to like call suppliers and make sure we get more stuff. So it completely transitioned. Uh, and we really, 
really underestimated the demand. So we're selling probably three times more than we, than we expected uh, in the market. Um, and so the, the idea is like, is this a sideline? A lot of people, when I talked to you earlier on, said, oh, this is a, it's like you're just selling you know, T-shirts, which we are. But it's not, this is a- Do you sell the socks? We sell the socks. I'll get oh, the, some socks are, the socks are almost completely sold out. We're getting more in <laughs> stock. Uh, no, the Evernote business socks. We are currently the, 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 the second. You have them right now? Of course I have Show them. your yeah. socks. Yeah. Oh, well, so that's the whole idea. Is oh, you have to, yeah. Yeah, you have to take your shoes so off. That, no, show it, show it. See? Oh, and, and the idea is they, uh, <laughs> so when you're, uh, when you're wearing shoes, they're just business socks, because all you see is the black portion, right? But when you take your shoes off, that's when the fun starts, and you can see that they're, they're different. And they're set up so that they all cross match. So you can take any two socks and pull them out in the morning. And it always looks like you're a hipster with, you know, just carefully matching but slightly mismatched socks. So it saves you like 10 seconds a day in the morning. Do you to do uh, Evernote uh, underwear as well? Evernote underwear? The, the Evernote trunks? Uh, probably not. If I'm sorry, up, I if, keep disrupting you. If we come up with a, you know, with a smarter way to do underwear, we'll, we'll, we'll think about it. Maybe with some, some embedded gadgets or something, <laughs> maybe. I don't want to get in there. <laughs> um, but... The idea was this, we didn't think of this, we don't think of this as merchandising. Like this isn't a sideline business, this is a mainline business. And so this is the, the impact on sales. Um, so I, I pulled the sales numbers from the month before we launched the market. So in August, uh, basically our sales were 89% uh, of the money we made was from premium subscriptions, you know, consumer premium subscriptions, and 11% was from business. Mm -hmm. We only launched business about seven months before this, so like, I was very happy that business was already double digits, but, but that, that was the breakdown. It was 89% to 11% in August. And then we launched the market, and so three months later, in November, last month, I, I just did a comparison. What happened is the overall revenue went up by 55% in three months, and the market is now contributing about 30% on an ongoing you, basis. You increased your revenue 55% in three months. 55% in three months. And the market, so the market contributes a new 30% on top of everything, but it also made the other two grow as well. So there's a, there's a positive up, uplift because what we're seeing is... Well, people buy a scanner, it's good or not, and uh, then they get into a software. Yeah, and it's the same, like, as long as you focus on the people, and the people are knowledge workers and we're solving the same yeah. kind of emotional problem for them, they want to buy more and more but stuff. Wait, there's something I really like to do always is how many of you use Evernote in the room? Wow. See, it's, uh, it's near, I would say 95%. It's still a growth opportunity, especially in Europe. Um, uh, and thank you, by the way, for being back, even though you already have 95%. <laughs> but there's still a few empty seats, though. So right. there's, still, there's still people that, you know, we got to get into the, in, Yeah, there's still potential here. In Europe in particular, I think Europe is, uh, it started growing really quickly in the past couple of months. Um, the summer was like totally dead for us in Europe, basically. Apparently no one does anything in the summer. It's very French to Jerry be at the beach in August, yeah. Not just French, I mean, I think like we don't really see nothing. We're thinking maybe we have an event, we'll start having events in Europe like in the summer. In South of France? That are just like get, the, get back to work events. We'll just be like lecturing people too. Or store notes about what's happening in Ibiza and uh, that's another potential. We you think we should about. have an event in Ibiza? Well, it depends on if you want to add, add another line of <laughs> revenue, you know. Sort of There's idea. a lot of uh, thoughts to store about um, your summer. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> uh, we can give, we're getting back to the, the Evernote swimwear, I guess. Yes. See, I'm kind of obsessed here. I, I can see. It's, you're driven. Um, so the, the, the overall, the idea here is, uh, since these are mutually self-reinforcing, not only is market overnight bringing in 30% of revenue, um, but it's actually making everything else bigger as well. Um, so what are people buying? There's 13 products right now, and these are all very carefully selected. Uh, two of them are actually French-made. Um, they're uh, Cody CL uh, backpacks that we partnered with to make these really great You mean backpacks. manufactured? Designed and manufactured, yeah, oh, in, really? in, in France. Uh, but they're from all over the world. The idea is we, since we're so international, in the past few years, as we've been traveling everywhere, we've just found great companies all over the world, and then we partnered with them to make really good products. So the, the top seller is the, the, the scanner that Guy was talking about. So this is the, the Fujitsu ScanSnap uh, Evernote scanner, and it's ridiculously the world's best scanner. That's going really well. And then the stylus, which I saw you had uh, backstage, the JavaScript stylus, is uh, uh, doing really well. Uh, that's uh, the first ever iPad stylus with a thin tip. So it's just like a pen. 
Uh, and then the third is the, 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 the triangle commuter bag uh, from Japan. Uh, and the, these three make up more than 50% of, of, of the sales, but there's a lot more products like the, the post-it holder and things like that, which are frankly, we're just inventory constrained at this point. Like we would be selling a lot more of them if we just had more. But these, these are all kind of small volume, small batch, you know, mostly handmade stuff that's uh, harder to keep in stock. Um, but the really interesting thing is when you look at who's buying it. Um, so this is, the, this is the current breakdown of orders from the market. 49% uh, of, uh, of, of the orders in the market are coming from people who are premium users or business users. But 51% are coming from people who have never paid us for anything before. So 51% of the revenue is coming from free users. And of those, there's, there's two categories. Um, the totally new users are 11%. So 11% of the people have never even heard of Evernote before. Like they, they didn't have an Evernote account until they bought something. And we haven't done any advertising or marketing on this. So it's really, you know, they saw the bag or a scanner at a friend's house and they got it. But 51% are people who didn't pay us anything. So there were many people in this category that have been using Evernote for free for you know, two years, three years, four years, and they engage with the brand, they, they use the product, they like the company, but they never paid us. And we always said, remember we always said, it's more important that you stay than that you pay. Like our whole model was based on, we just want you coming back, we don't really push to, to yeah. convert you, we don't You're push to sell. You're not pushing anything. And a lot of people Is told that us- Is that the end of marketing? As, like you don't do any marketing. Well, we do a lot of marketing, but and you're not pushing, you're not emailing, you're not, it's very, very low key, right? It's we definitely don't push. Do you do Google ads or Facebook ads? We're, we're, starting, buy we're starting, we haven't in the past, we're just starting to experiment because now that we actually have physical products to sell, I think we can, it'll be interesting yeah. to see how that works. So we're just starting to experiment on those. The goal of our marketing is not to convince you to buy anything. Um, we specifically say that. The, the, you know, whose job is it? At any company has somebody whose job is to, is to take someone who hasn't bought a product and get them to buy it. Like, whose job is that? Um, most companies say that's the job of the sales department or the marketing department. We specifically say that's not the job of the marketing department. That's the job of our existing users. Like, it's our users' job to get their friends to, to sign up and to pay for stuff. The job of our marketing department is to understand what our existing users want and make, them, make, make those users more likely to actually love us so much that they they, they, they refer their friends or they get their friends to buy a scanner or a pen or a bag or, or, or a post-it well, holder. That's a, you're a second speaker insisting about love and why love is important. That's interesting. Five years ago, the theme of the web was love. Yeah. And well, everybody would look like, like did you? Did I, think, I think this is a major thing. I think the, the world is moving from a, a scarcity-based economy where most, most businesses were based on, on the scarcity of goods. And now it's, it's shifting over to, to be, we're kind of in a post-scarcity economy, at least, at least digitally, we're a post-scarcity economy. And what, you know, what motivates business in a post-scarcity economy, I really do think it's love. Uh, so the marketing is for us to understand the community, not to push. Um, but you're saying this like it's normal, but that's a huge mega change in marketing. Like, I mean, if you think about most brands, they still do ads, collecting leads, Email marketing, yeah. push, 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 push. I think there's still a place for that. You just Conversion have, rate. Yeah, you just have to, you have to do it intelligently and you have to do it in a way that doesn't, that doesn't push people away. Like, the biggest thing we did um, you know, two years ago, three years ago, we were getting a lot of pressure from people who wanted to be investors and others who said, look, if someone is using Evernote for a year or two years or three years and they don't pay you, they're, they're deadbeats. Like, you, should, you should try to get rid of them because if they haven't paid you in two years, they're never gonna pay you and they're just taking up expenses. And we said the opposite. We said, no, I think if someone uses our product for two years or three years or more, and they haven't paid us, what they're giving us is more valuable than their money. The fact that they're giving us their attention, that's actually more valuable. And if they haven't paid us for anything, even though they love the product and they use it, it's our failure of imagination. Like, we haven't provided a product that they want to wow. buy. Love it. And now with the market, we saw that. So there were lots of people, this 51% are people who are, who are now buying physical things who never paid us for, for software. So you had people who were using. So they have not paid you for five years. They haven't paid us for five years. And suddenly they buy you a scanner. Yeah, yeah, and or so a pen. yeah, and they buy a scanner for five hundred dollars <laughs> or, or a pen. And actually, you know, that scanner is is a, is an expensive enough item where that's several years of premium, you know, that we get. And lots of people are doing it, wow. uh, which was the really amazing thing. So I think this this whole thing just proves that we were we were onto something when we said, you know, it's more important that you stay than that you pay. This mm -hmm. is the 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 post scarcity based, the love based. 
uh, way to market uh, services. Any any other slides you have? No, I think. I Phil, think, when uh, do you go public good. again? When do we go public? Uh, in a few years. Um, I think it's it's it's. I think we have a moral obligation to be a public company. Why? Um, we're asking the world to trust us with 100 years of their most important information. It's important to reciprocate. So I think anyone in the world who wants to be an owner should have a chance to be an owner. Oh, that's an interesting uh, way to see it. So I really think we, we, like, it's important for us to be a company that's worthy of being a great public company. We're not right now. But the, the reason why you would go public is to make your users, to give them the opportunity to buy yeah. It's really own it, a bit of a company. I think it's moral terms. I think that I think that was the original reason why we have public companies. Is it was really kind of a part of a moral contract, and we want to do it. Part of having these three revenue streams is definitely so that we can be health, so that we can build us to the point where we deserve to be public. Uh, you know, going from from one revenue stream to having a, a balanced set of three that actually mutually support each other, I think is much healthier. So we'll give it a couple of years for these three streams to develop to become more predictable, and then you know, two three years from now, I think we'll we'll go public. But it's it's definitely something we we it's definitely something we want to do because I think it's the right thing to do. It's not something that we're you know rushing towards because it's. Uh, it's a difficult step, and it can be pretty disruptive. If you're not doing Evernote, Phil, what were you doing right now? What would you be doing? You know, the whole point of Evernote is that it's, we wanted something sufficiently epic to be our life's work. Like, this is, you know, this is all I want to do. Uh, this, is, uh, this is my life's work. This is the life's work of, of, of a lot of people at the company. Uh, you know, our mission is to just make the world a little bit smarter by just making knowledge workers a bit having make better decisions, make them a bit more productive, a bit more elegant. And uh, I don't think, I don't, like I don't identify myself as an entrepreneur. I'm not motivated by starting things. I just want, like, I want to, I want the universe to have noticed that I lived in it. And this is a cool way to do it. Um, but just, just to have a side project, I actually just recently got involved with, a, with an organization in a very small way, which is doing the coolest thing in the universe. We are, uh, it's part of the Long Now Foundation. Uh, we're bringing back the woolly mammoth. The what? The woolly mammoth. So in a few years, there will be real, live woolly mammoths roaming around, uh, roaming around the place. You 3D print them? Uh, just the prototypes. You know, <laughs> the, the, the early prototypes are 3D printed. But no, it's going to be real. Yeah, it's crazy. So that's, a, that's not work related. But how do you do that? Uh, you find some woolly mammoth DNA, and you find a willing elephant. And you. And then you get you get woolly mammoths. Uh, yeah, so it's it's another hundred year product. It's a hundred year project because uh, it's going to take a hundred years. Why do you want mammoths to be back? Because they're awesome. What what could possibly be more awesome than bringing back woolly mammoths? <laughs> sure. Because we um, made them extinct. Because we made them extinct. How about People dinosaurs? Made... Dinosaurs. Well, first, I don't think we have as much of a moral obligation to dinosaurs because humans didn't make dinosaurs extinct. Uh, so, you know, they can go screw themselves. They're, that's their own They fault. disappear on their own, yeah. But like dodo birds, woolly mammoths, you know, passenger pigeons, like we made them extinct. We should, we should bring them back. So seriously, you're involved in the initiative to bring back mammoths? Yeah. You asked what else I would be doing if it wasn't for Evernote. So I would say, you know, it has to be elephant related. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, that's unusual. Uh, I, ho I hope so. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, I always wanted, you know, I always want to make sure that, that <laughs> I'm doing some stuff that's even crazier than Evernote. So that when people ask us, you know, why are you, why are you guys making socks? Why are you making enterprise software and uh, you know fashion products? And say, oh, that's all. That all makes perfect sense. Look at this other crazy stuff that I'm doing. So, <laughs> which is nothing compared to that. That exactly. stuff. Yeah, the woolly mammoth is sort of the anchor that makes everything else look really sensible. <laughs> so. Phil, we're a little over time already. Unfortunately, I, uh, I, 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 should, I should plan the web for a week or something. Um, you should. It's a it's great almost... experience. Congratulations to you and Geraldine on 10 Thank years uh, of the web. It's, yeah, it's, it's only 10%, uh, right? 10% done. But yeah, 10% yeah, that's, 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 that's a good And a you're good here, you're going to be around? Yeah, yeah, I'm around, uh, I'm around all day. You have your uh, own, you have a room we can find you? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm doing some, some interviews and... Uh, you only did 45 last year, I think, right? I think I literally did 45 last year. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Not as many this year. How do we find you if we need to just uh, add Phil Libin, add P Libin? What yeah. is it, Phil Libin? Add P Libin or Phil, P. I never P. Libin, yeah. Or, or Phil, I ever Phil know is my email address. Uh, and, uh, and you'll be here. I'll be here, and I'm happy to talk to anyone. And if anyone wants to send me an email, uh, 
yeah, just fill it Evernote, just mention, maybe mention the web in the, in the subject, and I will, uh, I will have it not go automatically to, to spam uh, if you do that. <laughs> Excellent. Phil, thank you so much Thanks, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.